Mike, check Tracy. Can you hear me okay? Great, thank you. Hey, Mike, check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check, Megan, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. It is almost time for after GMS. Good morning to you everybody. Today is Monday, May 11th. Welcome to After GMS, our little kicked back version of the Good Morning Show, but on Facebook Live. Thanks so much for joining in on our chats here on Facebook Live. We're gonna have a number of conversations that we want you to weigh in on, so wait for those. But first, we'll get you started with our forecast. Mm -hmm. Ed Matthews, it's in, you're in the weather garden. It looks a little windy out there. Yeah, the winds have picked up over the past uh, 30, 45 minutes, and 
They'll continue to increase as we head through the day. Uh, may at times gust up around 30, 35 miles per hour, especially midday and afternoon. So we'll keep a sharp eye on those. Now we've got plenty of sunshine this morning. We'll see that sunshine all day long. Temperatures into the mid 60s, but with the wind, it's really going to feel chillier than that. Mainly clear tonight as we chill into the upper 30s towards daybreak tomorrow. I think some high clouds will start start to streak in. Now, although uh, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be dry uh, the way it looks now, I think we are going to see some extra clouds build, especially on Wednesday. That's in response to the surface winds turning to the southwest, but it'll be that southwesterly wind that will help to warm us up. Yeah, we start the warm up in earnest really on Thursday. A sun and clouds in upper 70s. That's where we should be this time of year, but it gets even warmer. Yeah, by Friday, low 80s and check next weekend. Got to spend some time outdoors, sun and clouds, and we're looking at possibly some mid 80s by Saturday and Sunday. Oh, the 80s sounds so nice. I'm so <laughs> excited. All right, Ed, thanks for the forecast. Let's get you started with our first conversation of the morning. Stacy Spivey, take it away. Well, Tracy, in just about 10 minutes, Surrey County will start their mass testing. It's really free for anyone. It's a first come first serve basis there starting at 8 a.m. And people even without symptoms can go up there and get tested. So there is a growing debate though on who should get tested. So this morning we want to know who or would you get tested and under what circumstances. So let us know what you think in the comments and we're going to bring up some what of what some viewers are saying. If I can get the words out of my mouth this morning, need more coffee. Okay, the first comment is from a person saying, uh, what is the point of all the testing before we open? Test me today, I'm negative, yet I could come in contact with a contagious person at any point after and spread germs. So unless it is an antibody test, I don't see the point of mass testing. I'd rather see stores leaving windows and doors open to flush fresh air. I don't trust ventilation systems in stores and offices keep too many germs recirculating. And another person said, I think if a person has two of the symptoms, coughing, fever, they should be tested. I was sick for two weeks with COVID-19, went to Cone Health. They refused to test me because I did not meet the criteria. I had cough and a temperature of 100, but I had not been exposed to anyone, so they refused to test me too. And then one more text this morning says everyone should be tested before returning to work now and everyone tested before phase two opening starts. So I'll toss it back in the studio to see what you guys think about it. So you're asking, uh, would we get tested? Is that right, Stacy? Yes. Okay. And then under what conditions would you get tested? So Ed Matthews, would you get tested and oh, yeah. under what circumstances? Well, you know, I always thought if you go back to the very beginning of this, uh, when the tests weren't even available, I thought it would be nice, if you will, if if I got tested before I went to visit my mom. Now, I don't want the virus myself, but I definitely don't want my 83 year old mother to get the virus from me. I don't think I'd ever forgive myself uh, for that. That would be a convenient test for me. But I think and as I talked about uh, during the Good Morning Show, the more tests we have and the more people, the more that we know people are positive or negative, the, the better I think we can deal with this overall virus moving forward. Okay, great point, Ed Matthews. Uh, Megan Malaris, what do you think? Well, you know, I think I would not just go get tested for no reason if I had planned on continuing to stay at home mostly and wear my mask while running essential errands. However, Ed brought up a good point. If I were planning on seeing a loved one, especially a senior loved one, like a grandmother who or someone who is more immunocompromised, I think that would be a good basis to get tested because I could, you know, be carrying the virus and not be exhibiting symptoms as someone who was otherwise healthy. So I think that's a good point. Also, perhaps if someone at my workplace had tested positive and if I had come in contact with that person, I'd want to know and get tested before putting my family members at risk. However, I think you have to weigh the pros and cons. Are you planning on staying home? If, if so, why subject yourself to someone in line at the testing site who potentially does have the virus? So it's a lot to consider, but obviously as this testing ramps up, we are going to see more confirmed cases, but you have 
have to put those in perspective and look at the total percentage of positive cases per the total number of tests to really give yourself an idea. You know, those are very good points, Megan. And as I think about it, you know, I agree with you on a lot of those. You know, if you're staying home primarily, there really is no need to get a test, um, especially if you're not having symptoms. Michelle also said, no symptoms, no test, don't waste the mm -hmm. test. And that's from one of our Facebook commenters, actually Michelle Southern's grown to be a good friend of mine on our Facebook Lives. Uh, so, you know, one of those situations where if you have a lot of symptoms, then for sure, if you need to go back to work, or if you've been in contact with someone, yeah, I mean, getting a test is probably a top priority for you, but if, if none of those things fall into your category, then maybe not. All right, so we have talked about our first conversation right now. We are moving on to um, our morning headlines, Megan. Yeah, so let's talk about facts, not fear, as far as COVID-19 numbers in our state. Right now, at last check, as of 11 o'clock yesterday, the state's latest update, there are nearly 14,800 cases of COVID-19 in the state. They include the people who have already recovered. Remember that. There are almost 600 cases in Guilford County, about 370 in Forsyth County. We're awaiting another update this morning. We'll have new numbers and break those down as far as percentages and important perspective on WFMY News 2 at noon. Triad shopping areas are opening under phase one of this statewide reopening plan. All North Carolina Belk stores will reopen today at noon with reduced hours. Four Seasons Town Center in Greensboro also reopens, but the food court is closed and not every store will reopen. Belk is changing some store policies to keep customers safe. Dressing rooms will remain closed, but you can try on clothes at home and return them later. Target and Walmart are also closing dressing rooms. Five Triad Health Centers will get funding to expand their coronavirus testing today. They're getting a portion of the $12 million available in statewide funding for this. It will pay for walk-up or drive-up testing and protective equipment for staff. Two Triad recipients include Triad Adult and Pediatric Medicine in Greensboro, as well as the United Health Centers in Winston-Salem. Well, speaking of Winston-Salem, the city is arming people with proper protection. The city will hand out 20,000 masks to seniors who are 65 and older. There are nine distribution sites. Now, to get one, seniors must present a valid ID. The masks are free, but they're limited to one per person or two per car. You can get one first come, first serve, starting at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, Tuesday, May 12th. And you can find one of the nine distribution sites on our website. Mount Zion Baptist Church in Greensboro is giving away free food again. The church is partnering with the Out of the Garden Project and Chick-fil-A to provide meals for those in need. You can stop by the church on Alamance Church Road from noon until the food runs out tomorrow. The church has 800 meals and fresh produce to hand out. Volunteers will bring the food to your car starting at 1030 in the morning. Well, the city of High Point is putting new rules in place for bus riders. Let's get to WFMY News News Candace Red in High Point with what you need to know about this new safety requirement. If you plan on using the High Point Transit system, you are required to wear a face mask or face covering, and that mask should cover your nose and mouth. The city established the new safety requirement in accordance with the CDC advisory to use a cloth face covering to slow the spread of COVID-19. As of today, city officials say the High Point Transit System is not aware of any employee or bus driver with COVID-19. The city, however, is still taking the necessary steps to flatten the curve. While in service, workers wipe down frequently touched surfaces on buses every 30 to 60 minutes with disinfecting cleaner. Buses are also also cleaned each evening with a medical grade disinfected from top to bottom. Now, when it comes to the new face mask requirement for passengers, the question is, what do you do if you do not have a mask? For individuals who do not have masks, and that is kind of why we waited until Monday until we had a supply, operators will have masks on the bus, and if a passenger needs one, they will provide one for them. The High Point Transit System has 1,400 masks on hand for passengers with 1,500 on order. Now, we also know that the transit system is placing new orders about every two weeks or so to avoid running out of masks. Now, if the transit system cannot provide you with the mask, the city says you will not be denied transportation. You are, however, encouraged to at least wear some sort of face covering, whether that's a bandana or a scarf or some other item that will 
will cover your nose and mouth. But for more on this, all you have to do is visit our website. That's WFMYNews2.com. All right, that's great information from our Candace Red. I will turn back to our panel here because we are about to begin our second conversation. Stacy, what's the topic? Well, the topic is phase one. We are officially in phase one, and that's opening up a lot of places in the triad. We saw a lot of long lines at different places like TJ Maxx and Costco on Saturday because retail stores are open. Now, the number of customers allowed inside is limited, and they are practicing social distancing. Parts of state parks and beaches also reopened, and churches continued their outdoor services we want to know where have you gone since we've been in phase one? You can let us know in the comments. Have you been to the grocery store, the retail or any retail stores? Uh, maybe you were one of those people in the TJ Maxx line. Uh, I can say that I have been to the grocery store and I have been to places like Lowe's and Home Depot, but that's about it. Um, I have not gone to any retail stores yet, and I probably won't until I absolutely need something. Um, I personally love going shopping. It's kind of like retail ther therapy for me. Tracy, I know it's like that for you too. But at this time, I think I'm going to wait till the crowds kind of thin out a little bit. Yeah, I have only been going to the grocery store when I need something, and my wonderful husband has been going to get gas for me, which is awesome. And, and we don't have to do it that much right now, right? Because we're not going as many places, but I do appreciate that. So Megan, uh, where have you been or have you been anywhere? Well, yesterday for Mother's Day, we went to the stables where I ride horses to show Christian some of the horses, but we were the only people there and, you know, got the barn owner's permission and everything. And so that was a nice outing where we didn't have to worry about any crowds. My husband has been to the grocery store. He's taken the proper precautions. And then also just recently, we did go to a small family gathering, no more than <coughs> six people, and we took precautions. Uh, but I was amazed by the number of people on the highway who seemingly have forgotten how to drive amid this COVID COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic and the staying at home. I mean, uh, people were cutting each other off, like swerving in lanes. It was unbelievable. So please, if you are going to be out and about, be careful, be safe, take your time. All right. Thanks for that reminder, Megan. How about you, Ed Matthews? Sanford over the weekend, right? Yeah, well, I just went on Saturday to visit mom because I had Saturday off and, and spent the day there. But other than that, I really don't go anywhere. I walk my dog and enjoy the weather and, and I'm happy doing that. Take some nice naps occasionally. Once in a while, when I really get a list of things that I need, I will go to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, after you've kind of like written down your list for the last week right. or two. Yeah, I compiled something big. So uh, we are asking you on our Facebook Live about this. Where are you going or have you been under phase one? Carnita says just the grocery store and Target. Melissa says people need to self distance and protect themselves. She says it was crazy packed this weekend. The hoarders were in the grocery store, she says. People coughing. She said she had a panic attack. She won't be doing that again. Wow, it must have been quite chaotic at some places over the weekend. Um, we also are hearing from people like Myra who says, I go wherever I want to, I just use my common sense. Common sense goes a long way during this time, I will tell you that. Um, also hearing from uh, some people who are saying that they think that people should be going, to, or should the source should have never closed in the first place. So we have two sides to this, of course, not everybody agreeing that phase one or phase two are going to work and think that we should just open up all together. Um, and other people who are saying phase one and phase two are necessary to decrease the spread. So we have that, um, I'm not gonna say argument, but that discussion going on <laughs> on our Facebook Live right now. So it's, it's really interesting. I know for me, I have really enjoyed uh, not feeling the pressure to go out to the grocery store or to the mall. I've saved a lot of money, you know, not shopping as much as I used to. And I kind of like this new revised version of living um, and plan on continuing it for a little while. Not only is it kind of better for my family, it's better for my wallet. And uh, I can't really, not only is it keeping me safe, but you know, there are other benefits as well. Um, but you know, in terms of taking out food, we do that a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll go curbside and pick up something in you know a second just because you know I, without going grocery shopping as much i can't cook as much yay <laughs> see how i turn that into a positive um so i would say 
Ed, how long do you think you're going to be able to do this? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to watch the opening of, well, of course, we're in phase one, uh, see when phase two starts. But I think I'm going to be one of these people that very gradually puts myself back out there. I still want to be cautious again. I don't want to take the virus home to my mom. So I'm just going to continue to be, uh, you know, uh, just very, very cautious. But you know, as you mentioned, Tracy, um, you know, this is kind of a new normal and it's kind of helping us to kind of slow down. We know that under normal circumstances, you know, life can be a rat race on a daily basis. So, you know, pick the good out of this and kind of slow down and, you know, smell the roses occasionally. I'm kind of enjoying this a little bit, not running here and there and everywhere and all around town. Yeah, I agree, Ed. I mean, I've, I've tried to find the positive in every situation mm -hmm. and that is definitely a big one. So, Stacy, how long do you think that you can do this, this new kind of normal right now? Oh, well, I think that I slightly disagree with you, too. Uh, I'm so ready <laughs> to go and do things, but that's just my personality. I am one that likes to go, 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 and go. And my husband likes sometimes to just, like, stay home and chill. And I'm like, can we go out and do stuff? Like, I get so tired of sitting on the couch. But uh, I am so ready, so ready to see my family. Mm -hmm. I have not seen my parents since October. That is the longest I've gone in my 29 years of life. And and so I was FaceTiming my mom yesterday and I might have shed a tear or two because I'm just so ready to see them. So mm -hmm. I am ready for that time for when we can go and do and get back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, do I think that we're ready? Probably not. And uh, I think I will be a little hesitant about traveling um, in the near future. But I, like I said, I am so ready for it. Yeah, I'm glad you told us how you really feel, Stacey. I mean, mm. there are a lot of people mm. who are ready for uh, to get back to the way things are. And I mean, you can't can't argue with those feelings. Mm -hmm. So, Megan, um, how long do you think you can go? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to continue to take it on a case by case basis. I'm still a little bit leery of getting on an airplane right now, even though I'm with Stacy and that I can't wait to see my family. And I know my parents are really anxious to see Christian. It's been several months since they've seen him now or several weeks, I should say. But as far as like the day to day errands, I mean, there was an example this weekend. I needed some makeup for work. I'm running low on some products and I thought, oh, the beauty supply store is back open right now. Should I just go and get what I need? Or do I really need it that urgently where I can't order it online? And so ultimately I just ordered it online and it's gonna be here in probably a couple of days anyway. So, you know, I think I'm just gonna continue taking it on a case by case basis. I wanna protect myself and my family and my coworkers for when the time comes when we all will be back together. So I, I for me, especially with a young child at home, I'm just gonna play it safe. Yeah, I hear you. All right, we've had some great conversations mm -hmm. this morning. And Ed, everybody's talking about the forecast, mm -hmm. this 80 degree popping up on our seven day looks great. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at that seven day. One thing I want to note about this morning, boy, the winds occasionally really gusting up here in the garden and those uh, winds are going to be an issue in Piedmont weather today. They could occasionally gust up between 30, maybe even as high as 35 miles per hour power outages. We couldn't rule that out when the winds get that strong. So we'll keep an eye on it. At least we'll see plenty of sunshine. We're on our way to the mid 60s, mainly clear, a little frosty tonight as we dip into the upper 30s. Late night, there could be a few high clouds. Now tomorrow dry, but I think we'll see more of a mix of sun and clouds mid 60s. Winds turn to the southwest. That's going to help to warm us up, but it's going to bring in a little moisture. So some extra clouds on wind Wednesday. Right now we'll keep it dry. We may have to add a shower on Wednesday. We'll wait and see upper 60s. But yeah, the warm up really begins on Thursday upper 70s. That's where we should be for this time of year. Mix sun and clouds for Friday through the weekend and uh, low 80s there on Friday, mid 80s by the weekend. And although I don't have a mention of a afternoon pop up storm, when you get temperatures into the mid 80s, that could be enough daytime heating for a stray or isolated storm over the weekend. But in terms of widespread rain, not in the cards anytime soon.
Well, call me McDonald's Ed Matthews because I love it. <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on After GMS. You can find us every day at 745 on Facebook Live. Join in on the conversations and tell your friends. We'd love to chat with you. Take care, everybody, and be safe.